In previous videos, I did overviews of my Canon A1 and C90 film cameras, but what I didn't cover was loading and unloading films, and that's what I'm going to do today. Now, 20 years ago, making a video like this would have been akin to teaching granny to suck eggs. There were no digital cameras. Anyone who had a camera had a film camera, and everyone knew how to load and unload film. However, Digital cameras have been around for so long nowadays that there will be a whole generation of young people who may never have seen a film camera. So I'm going to do this at a very basic level. And I apologise to those older people who may know a lot of this already. Let's start with film. And this is how film used to arrive. There's a cardboard box. Inside there's another plastic box. And inside is the film canister. This part of the film is called a film leader. This is the part of the film that we, we thread into the, um, the film advance mechanism. And I'll be referring to film leaders later, so when I do so, you, you'll know what it is. With digital cameras these days, we can change the sensitivity of the sensor, the ISO setting, between every shot. With film, we couldn't do that. The, the entire film was the same sensitivity, known as the ASA value. This one's 200. And with early cameras, it was important to set the ASA on the camera manually to match this setting. On the A1, it's done using this, this dial here. With later cameras, this was done automatically. In 1983, Kodak introduced the DX coding system. That consists of various things. There's a, a barcode here, and there's another code here. These, these little squares are electrically conductive and non-conductive, and the camera can read them. And it can set the, ACE, the ASA setting automatically. The A1 can't do that, but the, the T90 can. And these, these barcodes also help with the, the machines that automatically develop the film. Between about 1982 and 2002, I used to do this all the time. Now, I haven't actually done this for about 17 years, so I'm hoping that today I won't make too much of an idiot of myself. Both cameras have film loaded already, and we're up to 36 exposures on each, so they're, they're nearing the end. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to finish this film in, in, the, in the A1, reload it back into the the canister, take the canister out and then load a new film. I turn the camera on, wind, wind the film on and set it to a, a fast shutter speed and take an exposure. Okay, I release the shutter and I get no, right now it's at the end. I, I, I cannot advance the film lever anymore so the film is finished. So when I get to that stage there's a little button at the bottom of the camera. So press that button. Now I'm able to rewind the film back into the canister, which I do with this lever on the top. So unfold the lever and then just wind, wind the film back into the canister. And you can feel some friction and resistance when the film is still out. Then you'll hear a sound and that resistance will go and then you'll know the film's all the way back into the canister. So it's, it's back in now. Okay, so now that's done. I then just pull up this lever, open the back of the camera and my film is tucked away ready for the, the film lab. On most occasions, when you re rewind the film back into the canister, the film is going to the film lab. So you just re rewind it in completely and it's not a problem. There's no, no, no film leader exposed. However, there may be occasions when you want to reuse the film. You may want to do double exposures or you may partly use a film, then you want to change to a different ISA setting, then you want to reuse the unexposed part of this film. And when you need to reload it, you'll need a film leader. So you don't want to rewind all of the film into the canister. So what you can do, on the camera there's an, an exposure count dial here. When you're rewinding the film back into the canister, just keep an eye on that exposure count. 
and when it gets back to zero before before the film is wound completely into the canister stop and then open the back of the camera and then what you should have is a canister with a, a little film leader exposed what I'm going to attempt to do now is load a new film into the camera. Now, as I, as I said previously, I, I haven't done this for a very long time, so I just hope I don't make too much of a fool of myself. So we've got the new film with the film leader. Put it in the camera, press this down, and there are sprockets in the advanced mechanism to line it up onto the sprockets, then put some of the film leader into this sprocket over here. It's quite, it's quite fiddly. As I say, I used to do it all the time and I didn't have a problem, but as I haven't done it for so many years, I'm now finding it quite fiddly. Okay, now set the, the camera on a, on a fast shutter speed. If it's in an auto mode, because the, the lens cap is on, it's going to expose for a very long time and really slow me down. I, I, I don't want that. So now it's, it's into the sprockets, just wind on the film advance mechanism and it starts to go in actuate the shutter again and now advance it again and that that looks fine now so now i'm i'm happy that it's on the sprocket so i can close the back of the camera and then continue to advance i'll do that a couple of times to get some fresh film okay now now we should be ready to shoot that's the A1, and it's all, it's all very manual. This is, this is how cameras were for a long time. When the T90 came along, it was quite a revolutionary camera. And when I show you how to do this on the T90, you can, you can see what a big improvement it was compared to the, the A1. I'll now do the same thing with the Canon T90, but you'll see it's a, a lot different compared to the, to the A1. So again, we're up to 36 exposures, so we're nearing the end of the film. Again, I'll, I'll put it on a, a high shutter speed. Press the shutter. Okay, now it's at the end of the film, and what you should hear, that whirring noise, it's just rewound automatically. I, I don't need to do anything, it's automatic. Okay. This is, this film indicator is flashing. I think that's to show me that the, the film has now ended. Okay, and there's a, a lever on the side of the camera. And so that's not opened automatically, I have to press a button in order to open it. Okay. And here we have the film that's been automatically rewound into the, the, ca the canister. As you can see, there's no, there's no film leader. And interestingly, Canon built functionality into the C90 to leave a film leader, but they didn't implement it. All they, all they needed to add was a button or a switch, so you, you could choose to have a film leader or not, but they didn't do it. If you want a film leader, you can do it, but there's quite a lot of messing around. You, you have to open the camera up, find a, a printed circuit board, and there are two solder tabs that you then need to connect. There's actually a video on, on YouTube somewhere showing you how to do that. So once you've got your film out, you need to put the new, the new film in. And again, compared to the, the A1, it's a lot easier. So I just put the film in here. Pull out the, pull out the leader until it reaches this little orange dot here. So all I need to do, and then close the back of the camera. You'll hear more, more whirring, and it loads automatically. So whereas there's a lot of messing around with the, the A1 and similar ca cameras from the same era, with the T90, it is absolutely simple. No, no problem at all. So it shows me the exposure count is at one, so I'm all ready to go now with a new film. As I said before, the T90 can read the DX code on the film canister automatically, so I don't, I don't need to manually set the ASA setting. If I press the ISO button on the back of the camera, 
you will see that the ISO is 200, which is, which is correct for the film I've just loaded. On older cameras, such as the A1, you need to make sure that the ASA setting on the camera matches the film. On the, on the AS1 you can do so using this dial. This is a, another great advantage with the T90. I hope that was useful to anyone who's not familiar with film cameras. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.